you, you can try and shut down what a fan thinks about a team because you might be like, oh, they're just a fan. They don't know what they're talking about. You could try to shut down what the media feels about a team and what they say about a team because you could be like, well, they're the media. They don't really watch this team extensively. They got to cover all 32 teams. You can try to give the benefit of the doubt to what another coach may say about the team. You'd be like, oh, they're a coach. They just, they're going to say whatever to build a team up. Well, we get it. Okay, that's fine. But can you shut down a player? And and not just any player, but a player that is actually out there every Sunday, in this case, Saturday, but somebody who is a, a, a significant part of this team. Can you do that? I'm sure some people will try to, and they're they're trying to sugarcoat this, but there is absolutely no way you can sugarcoat this at all. Now, a a lot of y'all said this to me, and I was surprised because Tyus Bowser put this out last night. He put it out last night on his story where he was walking out from some facility. I don't know if it was Raven facility or what, but he put it out on his story, and he was recording these papers that were on the ground, and three of them, three of these papers said fire Greg Roman. Now, what's interesting about that, I thought, when I saw it last night, I'm like, all right, it's, he, he put it on his story. Maybe he's just frustrated. It's going to be deleted by the morning time. Nope, still there. Still there. Tight, and th- this is not just any average player on it. This is somebody who, who, whose name holds weight on his team. Ravens love Tyus Bowser. This is not somebody who's in a doghouse. This is not somebody who's been benched. This is not. This is somebody who is a fan favorite. This is somebody who is also a Ravens favorite. You know that the guy every single game, even when he was hurt, even when he couldn't play yet, out there throwing throwing catch with the, playing catch with the kids in the stands before every game, even when he wasn't even playing. And he'll do it with Ravens fans. He'll do it with opposing teams fans. He just does it with all the fans where he'll, he'll throw the ball back and forth before every game. Ravens love Tyus Bowser. In fact, that, that's Carter, my son. That's his second favorite player just because my son, he loves Mario and Bowser. You know, he loves Bowser too. So anyway, and for him, for him to put that on his story and leave it there, he was, I'm sure Bowser was aware of the whole Lamar Jackson thing, the whole Twitter thing from a couple weeks ago after the Jags game. I'm, I'm sure B- Bowser knows PR. He, he know, he, Bowser ain't stupid. He knows what's going on. He knows people going to see that. So with that being said, do y'all trust him? The, the, the people that try to say, oh, fans don't know what they're talking about. Fans are just fans. Stay in a fan's place. All you Twitter GMs, all you armchair quarterbacks, all you armchair GMs, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Well, does Bowser know what he's talking about? You let me know. And it's, it's, it's interesting. It's always interesting. A player of that caliber putting something like that. Because, again, he could have just walked past it. He could have just looked at it wherever he was walking outside from and been like, oh, <laughs> let me throw this away. But he didn't. And even uh, another part, you could, you could say he's joking. You could say, oh, he's just playing around. But would a player really play around like that? To sh- show papers that say to not fire a position coach, to not bench a player, but to actually fire a coordinator on the team that they play for. You like I, I really want to see somebody try to minimize this. I would I would love to see somebody try to minimize this situation. This is the locker room speaking out. I would, I would love to see somebody try, oh it's not no big deal. Oh it's nothing. No, this is something. This is something. The game yesterday was um it it was it was just crazy. Uh, because the Ravens, they chose to uh, yet again. See, the, with the game itself, the Ravens losing on the road, uh, on yeah, on a short week on the road with the backup quarterback, losing to an, a division opponent, that's not even why a lot of us are tripping. If the Ravens would have lost, okay, Ravens lost to the Browns, da, 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 Deshaun Watson, he getting back in the groove, he looking better, da, da, okay, it would have been cool. But it's how they lost. It's how they lost. Because yet again, something's working. And it's an opponent's week. This has been an issue with the Ravens 
for a long time. And the issue is consistently taking advantage of opponents' weaknesses. That has been such an issue with the Ravens for a long time with their offense. They don't take advantage of opponents' weaknesses consistently enough. I was just talking to one of my guys about this yesterday. And was telling him another one of my issues with the Ravens offense is that they don't establish playmakers consistently enough. And what I mean when I say that, a guy could be going off one game. And he could be going off, and then the next game, you won't hear from him. And it won't be because the defense took him out the game. It's because the Ravens, they'll take him out the game. But anyway, that's another story. But there was some situational play calling yesterday that was suspect. But there was the strategy and just the game plan yesterday that was the worst than suspect. Browns could not stop you on the ground. They could not stop you at all on the ground. What do you choose to do? You know what? We're going to throw the ball. We're going to throw the ball. And see, the thing, it wasn't even just when they were down, double score. It wasn't even just then. It was before, before it got to that point. That's the worst part about it. Before it got to that point, they started doing the silly stuff. And I said during the game, I'm like, man, it's like the, the Browns are the only team. They're the only team that can out-goofy the Ravens. And the Browns, they kept trying to out-goofy the Ravens. They kept trying to say, here, Ravens, take it. We don't want to win this game. And the Ravens were like, no, we, we don't want to win it either. You guys have it there, buddies. Keep it. But anyway, listen to any of this stuff and tell me if, if you've ever heard it before. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. We'll see. You guys have a more than adequate receiving core, yet... They aren't being utilized to their full potential. Even with the injuries, those that are healthy aren't put in positions to succeed. Wow, that sounds awfully familiar. It's easier said than done, but the coordinator has to be held responsible for this stat. That was from former AFC North opponent. Really, the Hall of Famer, uh, beast of a wide receiver, Ocho Cinco, Chad Johnson. They're not put in positions to succeed. Oh, man. I wonder who said that. Anyway, listen to this one. This game has been a Greg Roman special. Ravens running backs are averaging 8.7 yards per carry. Dobbins, 9.6. Edwards, 7.9. And yet Huntley has 28 attempts, which are averaging only 4.8 yards a pass versus the worst run defense in the NFL since at least 2000. Make it make sense. Greg Roman. So, again, just highlighting... The Ravens going away from what's working. That came from one Warren Sharp. And, but he continued. Every single person on here coming with the Hunley is the worst quarterback I've seen. Narrative needs to realize three things. Number one, the Ravens have the worst wide receivers in the NFL. When you ask yourself, who, what, who, what quarterback would rather the Ravens wide receivers than the ones that they have? It is a very legitimate question. It's a very legitimate question. You, you could argue possibly the Giants, maybe. You could, well, the Bears, no, not the Bears. Um, who else? I'm trying to think of anybody off the top of my head, but it's really, really hard. But anyway, it's, it's not much people you can really argue for. But anyway, uh, number two, the Browns have the worst run D in the NFL. It's like, man... We, we, we knew about that going into the game. We kept hearing about that going into the game, how they have a bad run defense, how they, their, their defense is just really injured too. They can't stop the run for nothing. Ravens literally, literally just last week, they were going off in the run game. And then what makes it worse, even this week in this game, they were going off in the run game. They were going off in the run game. And they just decided, you know what, let's stop this. It doesn't make sense. Number three, the game plan for this was easy. Point your fingers at Greg Roman. Easy. It, it was easy. Easy. E easy money. But, <laughs> oh boy. That's, that's. One of my guys, he, he pointed out, he said uh, the pass to Deshaun Jackson, turnover. The pass to Demarcus Robinson. Turnover. <laughs> the runs. Good thing keep happening. But the, and then another pass to Proche. <laughs> Turnover. Cause remember the, the, the one on the, the two passes on fourth downs. They went to Proche. One of them was a drop. One of them just it was a tough pass. He, he didn't make the pass. 
Prochet, did he might did he run the route right? Who knows? But it ain't make it happen. It ain't work on fourth down. Then Demarcus Robinson yesterday was just ball security for him was it was, it was just all kinds of bad. And it, it's funny because before the fumble that he even lost, because he lost two of them, I think, right? But before the one he lost, there were, there were people saying, "Oh man, the way he the way he holds the ball is scary." I even said it myself. Cause he like he holds the ball way out here. Sometimes it looks like he extends the ball out on purpose to try to get somebody to knock it out. But it was scary. But um, it's an issue. But back to this, uh, you saw what was working and you still went against it. And and again, this is not a, a one off for this type of situation with this team. This is not just a one time situation. That's why so many people are frustrated because this is something that the Ravens do. This is something that the Ravens have been doing. This is not a new thing. <laughs> oh man, you know what? I've, I've been I've been seeing even the people that the, the, I, I, I've been seeing because you know there's some people that they are uh, super homers, and it's it's cool to each his own. But I've even been seeing people that are super homers that feel like the Ravens can do no wrong. And they have talked about it for the longest. Every move that the Ravens make is right. Every single thing that the Ravens do is great. They make every correct decision in the world. I've seen, even seen those people. Now, all of a sudden, they try to be, oh, no, this, this, this is enough. This is bad. This is terrible. We don't like this anymore. We, we're not taking this anymore. What are the Ravens doing? And all I got to say is I told you so. I told you so. It's old news for us on here. Um, it, ain't, it ain't nothing new. But now you got a player, a player actually saying something about it. Hey. But, hey, yeah, Ravens are 9-5, and five, though. They're they 9-5. and five. They they are uh, uh, normal job hours, 9-5. and five. But uh, so they, again, d despite all their issues, they're they 9-5. and five. But how would those issues get corrected? How would those issues get fixed? Find out on the next episode of Raven Ball Z.